the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always Namaste friends in the last lecture we saw about life cycle management in today's lecture we'll be seeing about glacier vault so what is this glacier vault understand this methodology worm methodology what is this worm write once read many why is it actually coming worm methodology and this glacier vault yeah, let understand this techno technology terms keep this in mind and let's take a deep dive to understand more about the same All namaste friends in today's lecture we are going to be seeing about the object lock okay so what did we see in the previous lecture the life cycle management how to actually move the objects you know from the SRA standard to the infrequently accessed uh, to the glacier okay so the glacier is the glacier deep archive is anything more than 180 days glacier is always greater than equal to 90 days uh, infrequently accessed and uh, one zone infrequently access is <clears throat> greater than equal to 30 days so we saw that and we should be knowing that and by just by clicking with the button the checkbox you know this thing we should be able to you know do the life cycle management so in today's agenda we are going to be seeing what is an object lock what is a governance mode what is a compliance mode what is a retention period what is a legal hold and what is a glacier vault lock so why is all these things on the first hand so let's actually take a deep dive by object lock <clears throat> what it means is you can actually write once <clears throat> but read many this is called worm the worm concept is write once read money or in other words how do I actually say it <clears throat> when you actually write a particular object and you feel like many persons can actually tamper it or they can actually write on top of it and you might actually lose certain aspects of it or the entire essence of it you would lock it correct that is exactly what we are doing you're locking it based upon the worm principle so which is write once read many so persons can actually read it there is no constraint in reading but in writing there is a constraint okay so this actually helps the objects from being deleted or modified as I told you for a number of times <clears throat> and you know for any kind of regulatory requirements you can actually use the worm methodology all right it acts as a additional layer of protection all right now let's get into the governance mode In the governance mode users can't overwrite or delete an object okay or alter its lock settings until they have special permissions so governance is basically only certain people have the governance capability to, to govern so usually in that as I said like you know in this thing you can't overwrite you can't delete or you can you can't even alter the lock settings okay first I've actually locked it <clears throat> but some person can actually overwrite that right so that is where the governance is actually coming right so unless you have special permissions you can't do that with the governance mode you protect objects against being deleted by most users but you can still grant some users the permission to alter the retention settings or delete the object if necessary how do i say this now say suppose you have a um, say suppose like you know you are the gatekeeper of a company and you actually lock every person persons can't enter <clears throat> but you can't be doing this 24 by 7 correct even though like you are the main person this is your company and you have your digital passcode you can't be giving this to every person so what you will do you will actually see your trusted friends or family members and you will actually give them the digital key and now say suppose you have three or four trusted friends or family members put together with whom you have actually shared the digital key which can actually open the world for many in that maybe for one or two persons you will give permissions which is slightly below you who can actually alter everybody's settings okay so that is the governance mode all right now what is a compliance a compliance is we need to be compliant on certain things otherwise there is um, you know otherwise there is some uh, consequence so compliance is basically obeying the laws and regulations if you're actually traveling once there's a red light you have to stop this is global universal you know this is across this planet this is the same language <clears throat> okay if it is green you can go amber 
decide okay um, so you have to be compliant if you are not compliant you might either meet with an accident or you will pay heavy fine you can apply the same principle in different aspects of life as well for the compliance if you are in the school you have to be compliant with the school policies and procedures um, in life you know wherever it actually apply applies so the exact compliance <clears throat> A protected op object version cannot be overwritten or deleted, more or less the same, including, this is where it gets in interesting, including the root user in your AWS account. <clears throat> so the root user is a main, main, main person. Okay, we actually started this AWS by using a root email ID, which is a main email ID, and you can't change that. Okay. So, um, when an object is actually locked in a compliance mode, its retention mode can't be changed and its retention period can't be shortened okay because it's in compliance mode already the compliance mode ensures the object cannot be overwritten or deleted for the duration of the retention period so when you have an object and when you actually put the object in a retention period a retention period is let's actually say the object has to stay for another three or four more months so even when the object is actually staying for three or four more ones, the compliance mode is making sure that no one accidentally tampers that object. Do I make sense? This is the compliance mode. Now the retention period is basically a timestamp. Okay, so it actually says like, you know, when the retention period expires and when it actually starts. <clears throat> so basically, uh, you basically hold an object for a fixed amount of time that is called the retention okay and during that time you have a time stamp in order to say when it actually expires after the expiry the object versions can be overwritten or deleted okay unless you have a legal hold on the object version okay so compliance in the retention period you can't do anything the retention is there and after the retention period you can do whatever unless until there is a legal hold or something of that nature all right this is a retention now what is a legal hold the s3 object lock this is all object lock you're actually locking an object right it enables you to actually place a legal hold a legal is a legal formality like how do i say this you attack a legal action against a person either not to see you or like you know uh, some family problems uh, or some case of a, some kind of a lawsuit or some kind of a you know legal action that you're taking okay so you actually place a legal hold like retention period this legal hold prevents an object from being overwritten or deleted because till the time till the case is actually proved you can't do much right which we all see across the globe and that is exactly what this is also here <clears throat> however the legal hold does not have an associated retention period and it remains in effect until removed. This is the problem with all legal laws, right? Okay, there is no particular time. Once a case starts, no one knows when it is going to end. Uh, different countries has got different, uh, you know, policies. Uh, and I know some persons like, you know, where, you know, some of the cases have been dragging for 15 plus years. Uh, so these are all like, you know, typical headaches, right? So that is what it is. So the legal holes can be freely placed and removed by any user who has an S3 put object legal hold permission. See this command, put object legal hold, okay? Put object legal hold permission, that person can actually put a legal hold. Now, what is a glacier vault lock? We saw about the glacier, anything greater than 90 days and deep archive is 180 and we saw like the time is 12 hours, minutes to 12 hours, 12 hours to 48 hours and stuff of that nature, correct? So, <clears throat> the Glacier Vault Lock allows you to easily deploy and enforce compliance controls for the Glacier Vault policy. You can specify anything such as a worm, it acts as a vault policy and lock the policy from future edits. Once it is locked, the policy can no longer be changed. Okay, it can no longer be changed. Exactly like what we have seen the governance mode, compliance, retention, legal, everything. So that is a worm policy. So this is what the Glacier Vault Lock also says. So what did we learn? You use the object lock to lock an object. 
okay which is a picture document and a thing write once read many worm methodology object lock can be on individual objects or can be applied across the bucket a bucket can have more than 100 plus images documents whatever we have seen that object lock can be done on an individual basis or across the bucket the object lock comes in two modes one is a governance and one is a compliance and we saw the difference between the governance and compliance compliance you can't be overwritten or deleted by any user including the root user that is the main thing the root user is the main guy is a super user so including the root user the compliance you can't do whereas governance is the same thing no person can actually delete or you know overwrite unless until they have some special permissions okay so governance can be changed but compliance cannot be changed you have to obey the law you know that is a truth okay governance people can come different kind of governance can actually happen okay let's actually remember in that manner the glacier wall lock allows you to easily deploy and enforce compliance controls and you can specify controls such as the worm and lock the policy of future edits so once the policy is locked okay once it is locked the policy can no longer be changed okay this is the most important thing like always you know where to contact me if you have any questions you know where to contact me this is an interesting chapter which is necessary to know the s3 as i told you the s3 is like at least five percent of the solution architect or the professional architect exam and we need to know the s3 so s3 has got like you know a few more chapters before we get on to the ec2 so let's also see like how it is actually done here so i have it here so if you see the management console services uh, we can go to storage okay uh, machine language storage we can go to the storage or the recently visited i have console s3 s3 glacier budgets and iam so i opened up the glacier management in this glacier management you can actually create the vault okay and you can actually do the worm methodology all right uh, so this is what i want to show so you, you guys can actually try and let me know if you have any difficulties. So I want to thank you for giving me your time. Till we see next time. Take care. Cheers. Namaste friends. I trust you have actually watched my Glacier Water lecture. Understood and probably liked it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach, reach out to me. I will try to help you to the best of my abilities. Like always, I would like to thank two persons. One is you for giving me a golden time. And the other is my wife Jayashree for allowing me to follow my passion. Till we see next time.